Hey everyone, Graham from Loudwire here, and my guest today is from the Jackass movies, the CKY stuff, and thanks to the magic of FaceTime, I get to talk with him today. Mr. Rab himself, thank you so much, man. How are you? Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me on. <laughs> of course, of course, and of course, the Bathroom Break podcast, uh, an awesome show. It's been going almost a year now. Uh, it's been awesome to see this thing take off and to hear you talk to all the jackass guys and then a bunch of other people that are really interesting as well. Uh, but right now, this is Wikipedia Fact or Fiction, so I went through Wikipedia uh, <laughs> today, printed out some stuff that may be true, may be false, you can tell me what's the truth and elaborate if you'd be so kind. Okay. All right. <laughs> First of all, because we, we check with everybody, Christian Joseph Rab, born in Willow Grove, Pennsylvania. True. That's correct. Okay. They do yeah. get that wrong sometimes. I, well, in the beginning, there was a time where it did say like Christopher... Robin or some, some weird <laughs> name. And then, you know, like, so I was like, Winnie the Wikipedia Pooh. before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and it did. It like said something way off. It was like the wrong year. I think someone fixed it because of that. Yeah. All right. Good, good. It, it says on Wikipedia that you are a founding member of the band Queef Attack. <laughs> well, that, dude, well, that, that's amazing because that was like a, a running joke between a buddy of mine and okay. I about this made up band. And uh, somehow it ended up on there. Okay, so, <laughs> so that was like a, a joke band that we made up and like we just, you know, created like song titles and we never actually went to the point of okay. like recording songs, but uh, but it was just this running joke and we'd go back and forth and we'd make like cover art for like the album and then send it to each other, you know, and, and somehow, I don't know how the hell somebody knows about that. It says the, uh, the CKY land speed video. It says a scene was removed from the DVD version and it featured Deco running around a Christmas parade as Santa because the real Santa was late. Yes, that's that, true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So what Dude, happened? It was that amazing. Day? Like he, he like cut it off. So he was in front of the real Santa. Oh. And then the whole parade thought that Brandon was the real Santa and he was just being nuts, you know, like running around, like shaking little like kids and like just being like, oh, screaming and hollering and doing that. And uh, and people thought it was a real Santa, but it was just hilarious because you're thinking like, would a real Santa be acting like this? You know, like, but uh, so he cut off and like he took the good surprise, you know, like when yeah. the real Santa got there, like everyone was like, wait, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It says that CKY2K was discontinued due in part to copyright issues, the first major one being from Bjork. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, there was her music was in there in that Iceland part, uh, Slam Distribution, who was, uh, who was distributing our DVDs at that point. They went out of business, and so they were, they were basically a huge warehouse full of DVDs. And Phil went over, uh, Bam's dad, Phil went over and got all these. So he literally had like a garage full of DVDs. And he's like, hey, Rabbit, you can sell these if you want. I was like, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I was like, I don't even have an online store or any of that. Like, I don't even know what to do with that. But um, that was kind of at the transition of when DVDs were starting to become obsolete as well. You know, I mean, yeah. probably a little before that. But but at this point in time, it's like, who's really buying DVDs anymore? You yeah. know, so, so it kind of, I think, all of it sort of was discontinued in in that regard and then um now though uh joe franz went back and and like f you know put everything into hd and and it looks great and and then i think eventually it'll go to itunes and all that stuff and and you'll be able to get cky2k again nice you know, so that's awesome yeah uh it says on wikipedia that you weren't called rab himself until the third cky video um I would say that's true. Um, I have, I'm jogging my memory, but really the, the story of Rab himself comes from Chris Aspite. Okay. He's the guy in one of the CKYs. Or he's in a bunch of them, but he was Hoofpate, the dude with the, oh, um, right, with yeah. the duct tape around his hands. <laughs> right. You know, and uh, so like he had that like goat hoof from the duct tape that yeah. they started calling him Hoofpate. And... Uh, and he was the one that coined the rab himself. He he basically started calling Ryan and me it because like 
CKY1 came out in skate shops. CKY2 came out in skate shops. And that started creating this buzz. And then around Westchester, like, we were still young, dude. I was, like, 19. But we would be, like, showing up at a party and uh, Aspate was would be like, oh, there he is, like Rab himself, live in person. Like, what are you gracing us with your presence? Like he was acting like, like you know, like oh, you're some big celebrity now that that CKY2K came out, and uh, and he was actually doing it to Ryan as well, and being like, there he is, done himself, you know, and it just stuck on my name. Yeah, because like Ryan Dunn, was, like was his name. And then later on, Novak actually was the one that came up with the random hero. And that was like this other weird situation that happened. There was like this bar situation where guys were jealous of the jackass thing. And then they were trying to be tough guys. And they were starting to fight with like me and Bam. And and, uh, this other friend of ours jumped into the mix of it and kind of like defended us or whatever. He he was a tough dude. So he sort of like created this situation then the bouncers kicked him out of the bar and as he's getting like kicked out the bouncers are trying to get the cops to arrest him he literally like shook the cop and started running and took off running and got away and this cop was like all fat you know and like couldn't catch up and was like breathing heavy trying to catch him and the dude like was like a, a block and a half up like already gone and some random hero like jumped out of the bush and tackled him until the cops got to him and then they arrested him. So Novak was there and he was like, what the f***? This f***ing random hero just jumps out of nowhere. And like, and then that became this funny thing we kept saying, random hero. And then it got attached to Ryan because Ryan was the random hero of our group. Like, yeah. if you ever didn't want to do a stunt or if you ever thought something was too crazy, Ryan would do it. It says that one reason that Jackass was canceled was the sudden departure of the CKY crew halfway through season three. No. No, no sudden departure at all, really. No, I- no. Uh, what actually happened was Knoxville um, was starting to get like a bunch of movie offers. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and I think originally he, he had always been working on being an actor. Um, and he uh, had done a couple commercials and stuff like that, but he naturally loved like this kind of you know, nonsense world of, of doing crazy shit. And, yeah. uh, and so that kind of just took off cause that was like his normal thing to do. And the acting was something he was working at. And I think as that took off, obviously the agent was his agent and his manager and stuff were able to get him, um, good deals. So he was able to get movie parts, hmm. but he was very cool about saying, Hey man, like to all of us, like, yo, I'm down for doing more of the show. It's just that I'm getting these movies and stuff and I'm going to do them, but I'm, I'm totally up for doing the show. And everybody kind of felt like it was a lot because cause we we were we had filmed those CKY for the first two movies over the course of years, yeah. you know? And like, so you're filming a bit, you break an arm or something and then you like let it heal and then you film more. And as Jackass happened, it was like we had to deliver stuff every week and so you're breaking your arm and then you're jumping off a building with a broken arm and then and then you're like tailbone's broken and you're like shit i'm still gonna do the shopping cart with this fucked up tailbone everybody was pretty beat up after having done uh 25 episodes of it oh yeah and it just became like yo we can't really keep up with it and uh and so it was like a collective decision i'll say obviously knoxville is the, the the face of jackass but he was definitely cool in the, in the fact of saying, hey, I'm up for continuing to do it. It's just, you know, it's up to everybody. And, and, and everybody kind of made a collective decision like that, you know, let's see what's going on next. And, and I think that's what kind of really opened the door for the movie. Viva La Bam, you left the show and the CKY crew to pursue a more sober lifestyle. Yeah, to, uh, true to an extent. Um, I, it, it was actually, a, it's a funny um, sort of timeline there, but I, I left, um, and I think it's pretty public knowledge. Bam and I had a falling out at that point in time, um, and I kind of needed to move on um, just for my own mental health, but but also, like, just things were weird, you know? Our friendship had changed, everything had shifted, fame and money and stuff makes people funny, and 
and uh, myself included, and uh, and I was getting heavier into drugs and drinking, and um, I mean, I'd always been an alcoholic. I'd always drank a lot. There, there was there's document, you know, documentation of that in the the haggard stuff, and I I was always drunk. I I just loved drinking and loved doing drugs, and and uh, it's funny because when I was younger, I didn't, you know, I didn't do it. When we were in high school, we were pretty pretty close, you know, pretty straightforward sober types. Yeah. And then I sort of found weed and drinking and all that and got into it. But as Jackass, Viva La Bam, all those things uh, came up, my partying ways got way heavier. You know, I was doing a lot. I was doing hard drugs, doing whatever, and just just living that life of that of that way. So after I bailed on the second Jackass movie and um, and doing the marriage show and and uh, right. and that stuff, like I kind of. Uh, I actually went heavier into drinking, um, and it was a pretty dark part of my life. You know, um, I uh, felt like I didn't have any friends. Felt like um, you know I couldn't trust anybody, and I literally got to a place where it was so dark. I was just sitting in my house with the shades drawn, drunk, sniffing coke by myself. You know, taking pills, whatever, and um, and I was like not contacting anybody you know and uh just drifting into this darkness of shit and uh i finally did get help and i got sober and uh i'm coming up on 10 years of wow. of sobriety uh clean and sober and um so but in that period of time i sort of drifted into this dark abyss sort of area where i didn't trust anybody or do anything and i, I didn't want to be a part of any of that to to be completely transparent, I was over the jackass thing. I was over everything. I was like, this shit's boring to me. This is so annoying. Like, that's how I really felt. And um, and then through getting sober and doing that, I was able to look back on that time in my life and really appreciate it and be really grateful for it. I have a photo of Ryan right over here that I look at every day, and, and I always think of him and, and laugh about funny shit. And and uh, and, and I'm, I'm I'm truly blessed and 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 lucky for that in my life wow. hashtag blessed <laughs> it's like no <laughs> wow. it's corny to say that word but I, but I do really feel feel that way because I, I, I'm lucky with the friendships that I've had especially with the guys in Jackass and and uh, CKY and all that but but also even stemming out further to my other buds in, in my life that I'm super close to Wow, that's great, man, and congratulations on almost getting to 10 years. I'm sure yeah. you'll make it, and you'll be able to celebrate properly when you hit, when you hit yeah, that yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so last one for you for this segment. Uh, it says on Wikipedia that Deco reportedly declined to appear on the Bathroom Break podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> bummer, bummer. Yeah, so yeah. so I know it, 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 it was kind of funny, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've just been open about stuff. And here's the thing. I love Brandon so much that I don't want to ever – I'm not ever trying to, you know, put it in, in any bad terms. It, um, Brandon's a good friend of mine, and first and foremost, it's that. And what I've found out it, for him is that – he he just enjoys like anonymity, man. Just yeah. just he has a nice family, married happily, and and just digging life. And and I think like he's the happiest I've ever seen him at this point in life. And I truly think that comes from getting back to just being the basic person that you are and getting away from the spotlight and those things. And I think that really helps. And I I found that to help for me. You know, just personally that when I kind of got away from stuff and was able to just get back into being Chris, the kid from Westchester, you know, like I, I really kind of reconnected with myself and I found that Brandon has done that too. So I think at times he thought, yeah, you know what? I would like to do the podcast. And so I thought that he was going to do it. And, uh, and then when it came down to time to do it, he was like, ah, oh, do you mind if I pass on it? I was like, nah, man, cause I totally understand. I get it. Um, this podcast that I've been doing has been my way of kind of getting back out there and, you know, and doing some stuff in front of a camera, in front of a microphone and, uh, and having fun with it. But, you know, that's not for everybody. And, and, and I realized that for me at this point, I mean, I'm pretty anonymous. Like I, I just kind of walk around, nobody knows who the heck I am. And, and that's an awesome feeling, you know, but I'm doing this podcast thing and, and it's been so much fun and it's cool. Cause you sort of fly under the radar, but you get an opportunity to be creative and do something fun. And, 
And so, uh, but the, the thing is about Brandon and, and not to get people psyched because they'll never see it, but he's always filming something and he's always got little skits that are fucking hilarious. And like when I go over there, he'll show me something and I'm like, oh, what's that for? And he'll be like, for me, Brad, <laughs> it's just for me, you know? And like, and I'm like, dude, it's hilarious because I'll get to see it and get to crack up at it. Um, but it'll never get put out, you know?